This is a story about an unknown culture, where even though tens of thousands were killed with the Jews in the Holocaust, they were never mentioned. This is a story about a race that had no country to call their own, so they headed to America to make it their home. And despite the racial profiling and prejudicing, they stood strong as a people and let nothing take away their passion for the most prized possession, their gypsy traditions. This is a story about the romance of a real gypsy wedding. Come with me and I will show you how the gypsy people kept wedding rituals that date back to the biblical days. Come with me and I will show you how many ceremonial steps a bride and groom must take before they're announced husband and wife. Come with me and I will show you what's behind the veil of a gypsy wedding. Because gypsies don't have their own country, there are many different races, which is called Vitas, like Russian gypsies, Argentine gypsies, and French gypsies. These French descents have every reason for great celebration because their big daughter is marrying into a prominent family. So let's watch how everyone from young to old has a helping hand on getting the bride ready for her big day. Now our ancestors taught us to never walk in a gypsy wedding without at least one bottle of booze or champagne. And the closer the relative, the more bottles you should bring, because walking in empty-handed would bring much embarrassment to family name. But in the mid-70s, the born-again Christian movement has entered the hearts of at least 75% of the gypsies across the world. And because both families consist of pastors, elders, and choir directors, any fermented drinks entering the hall would be frowned upon. The bride arrives in style, on the arms of both of her grandfathers. She enters the hall like a Hollywood premiere on the red carpet with paparazzi and all. Now opposite to the American tradition, it's the groom's family that pays for everything, from soup to nuts. And the groom's family is more than thrilled to welcome their new daughter-in-law in the family. There's one thing I could say about the gypsies. They're professionals at preparation, decoration, and celebration.
now it's time for the asking table. This is a VIP table for the bride's family and friends, with the groom's family serving them hand and foot with the best food money can buy. That's because they must ask for his daughter's hand in marriage for their son. So they're kind of buttering him up. But of course they already got their yes through word of mouth and through family. This is just to make it official and public. This next tradition dates back 6,000 years. In Genesis 24 of the Bible, we read the great patriarch Abraham sends his servant to find a wife for his son Isaac. After the Lord leads him to Rebekah, he immediately went to her father and offered silver, gold, and many gifts for Rebekah's hand in marriage for Isaac. So paying a dowry for the bride is not a new concept. And as tradition has it, the groom's family also has respected men to represent them to speak to the father of the bride. After they had some fun bartering, they settle on a dowry where everyone is happy. Now it's time for the father of the bride to make his speech, where he will return portions of the dowry, saying things like, for the respect of my father-in-law who came all the way from Florida, I'll give back this certain amount. And for all the respected men at this table, I'll give back this certain amount. But of course this is all done for tradition's sake, because all of the dowry goes to the newlyweds for their honeymoon location of their choice. There's actually three steps a bride and groom must take before they're officially married. The first step is bittersweet. Sweet because the proud in-laws change their new daughter-in-law in her custom-made wedding gown and show her off to all their family and friends. Since the first day a gypsy boy is born, the parents start planning the wedding. So this is their lifelong dream come true. This is the first time the bride and groom is actually seen together in the wedding reception. And the groom wears a red ribbon sash to represent this is his first marriage also. It's also bitter because the bride must now say goodbye to the only family she's ever known and loved. It's also time for the mother and father to say goodbye to the little girl. And because her marriage will put an 1800 mile gap between them, they say so with heavy hearts and tears in their eyes. The next step is the family dance, called the Kolo, where both families join together in a circular dance. The dance dates back hundreds of years, and the symbolism is very clear. It represents family, unity, celebration, circle of life, joy, and happiness. Now the flag she's holding is called the Stago. Loosely translated, it's called the Bride Locator. Because anywhere the bride is, so is the Stago. And only close family members can hold it. The last step is called the Crowning. This is where all the grandparents, uncles and aunts, get on the stage and pray for the couple.
And finally, the crown is placed and the bride and groom becomes officially husband and wife. Now it's time for the dowry table, which is called the doggo. This is where family members and friends get to participate to the newlyweds future by giving all types of gifts and dowry. And of course, the closer the family member, the better the gifts. Now, if you've ever seen Filler on the Roof, you already know that men and women sit at separate tables. Steak is always served at the doggo table, among many other delicacies. Now, of course, there are many cultures that give dowry to the new bride and groom, but they do so by handing them a white envelope with an undisclosed amount check. But the gypsy culture does things differently. After the guests are well fed, well known respected men surround the doggo table from one end to the other, usually with a mic. The men stand behind the guests and announce who their grandfather, their father, and who they are, what city they're from, and the amount they are giving to the young couple. Here's the grandfather giving a family heirloom that's been passed down from generation to generation. Now traditionally, after a dowry amount is given, it's placed in a large chyla bread with the middle cut out. But this family wanted to take it up a notch by using a jewel treasure case to place all the gifts and dowry in. After a guest give their dowry, they traditionally receive a silk or wool scarf, depending on the season. But again, this family wanted to take this tradition and put a new millennium twist by handing out gift boxes with faux champagne, champagne glasses, and men's cufflinks. Now it's very important that you receive this because it acts like a receipt that you gave your doggo. Anyone who does not have their receipt after the doggo table only means that you did not give any gifts for the new couple which would bring much embarrassment to your family name. And of course, no matter what culture you're from, a wedding must have a wedding cake. The newlyweds are assisted by aunts and cousins to help them cut the cake and sip on apple cider. And now that all the traditions were met and all the rituals were fulfilled and both sides of the family are happy, it's time for everyone to let their hair down and party into the wee hours of the night.
in a world where families come together around the dinner table just to bury their faces in their smartphones. Where strangers on Facebook know more about the personal life of a teenager than their own parents. Where if you want to know the whereabouts of your loved ones, don't expect a phone call. Just check their Instagram. Where our voice box has been replaced by texting when someone says happy birthday or Merry Christmas. I'm proud to be a part of a culture where the children still have the highest respect for their elders. I'm proud to be part of a culture where family sticks together, whether happy or sad, rich or poor, right or wrong. I'm proud to be part of a culture that puts old world traditions, family pride, and their faith in God above all. Yes, I'm proud to be a gypsy.